Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we turn to talking about the long-awaited and much-anticipated comic book-based wannabe blockbuster and feminist propaganda-pushing movie. Of course, we're talking about Birds of Prey. I've got a lot to say about this DC Comics extended universe sort of sequel to Suicide Squad 2, a movie that's also a sort of spin-off film for the Harley Quinn character as well. And besides this somewhat convoluted and confusing premise, the outcome of this movie and the early responses to it are certainly worrisome as well. You see, I saw the film last weekend and I've been catching up on some of the gossip going around about it and the release's details up until today too. And while it's still a bit too early to tell if this is going to be a hit or not or if it's going to make money, but the initial signs certainly aren't looking too good. For example, I know the theater I went to only pre-sold about four tickets and then other examples of low sales can be seen posted all over the internet. People showing pictures of empty theaters and such on Twitter, like this example from Lauren Chen. Now, now, this all may seem like some anecdotal evidence because it technically is, but also, it's not just us. This trend has been reported by many people online. And also, in addition, as this article states, pre-sale tickets are certainly not doing what they should be or what's expected, as I mentioned about my own order, which was confirmed at the theater as well. Only a few more people showed up. Now, before we get to the rest of today's story, let's first take a moment to check out our loyal sponsors at Raid Shadow Legends. Are you tired of playing goofy, bright colors? fluffy, cartoonish looking video games? Because not every RPG game must be cutesy and look like you're playing with rainbows or unicorns. I say enough with that kid stuff and it's time to rock and roll with the adult themes out there. Let's get real and raw and dark and epic and awesome by playing a more mature game like Raid Shadow Legends. And now it's really exciting because you can play Raid on both mobile devices and on your desktop computer. And also the game has cross device play so you can play with the same user and account while switching between devices whenever and wherever you want and however you like. So what are you waiting for? Go to this video's description and click on my special links and if you're a new player you'll get 100 silver in-game currency and also one free champion named Jotun. All this treasure will be waiting for you here by clicking on this section of the home screen. So good luck to you guys out there and I hope to see you out on the battlefield. Great now that that's out of the way let's get back to Birds of Prey. Now before we get into the actual movie and review which might surprise you guys because I did actually enjoy a good amount of this movie, but at the same time, it was also a shit show. It had enough subtle SJW stuff to make your head turn. And worst of all, what they did with the characters in an effort to meet liberal goals, that was unforgivable. But before we even get to the actual content of the film, which will result in poor reviews and terrible word of mouth, I'm sure, at least in some circles, and this will inevitably kill the goodwill for the picture, possibly turning it into a bigger flop than what happened this opening weekend, but at the same time, this film could still make money in the long run too. Captain Marvel came out last year and it was a similar film which had a girl-led cast and a black or brown washed character and it also butched up their female characters, particularly the white ones, just like what happened in Birds of Prey. And Captain Marvel still made a billion dollars despite all of that and despite having many detractors including yours truly. But Birds of Prey doesn't have the huge benefit of leading into a movie like Avengers Endgame, which certainly helped Captain Marvel a ton. But no, Birds of Prey has no big or huge DC related sequel coming up next, which would make people more likely to see this entry beforehand, which is what happened with Captain Marvel. In fact, Birds of Prey is technically a follow-up to 2016 Suicide Squad movie, another film that although profitable, well, it was quite the critical failure. I could see that possibly happening for Birds of Prey too, but before we get to the actual content and why, let's just talk about why this premise and the pitch to the public failed for one more minute. Basically, people are sick of this girl power feminist bullshit. And there's no audience for that and no one's going to show up to a movie if you promote it that way. It has nothing to do with not liking girls or sexism or anything either. It's just because they do these girl films with this feminist stuff. But all girl movies aren't necessarily bad. The original Charlie's Angels films from the early 2000s were great and there's many other examples of that. But it usually amounts to them actually using hot chicks and having fun with it and not making it this feminist garbage with the girls dressing down and looking ugly. Essentially, no one wants to go to the theater and be preached to and pressured into adhering to anything, let alone do we want to listen to boring, woke, liberal, corrupted identity politics. Yes, the whole woke messaging and the all girls screw the boys premise of Birds of Prey is certainly hindering its chances of being successful. I mean, these movie makers know that these films are usually seen by teenage boys, men, and other comic book fans, right? And if you didn't know, liberals and SJWs and feminists, they don't give a shit about this kind of product. And they don't give a shit about us or anyone or anything. The only reason they've even been 
become involved in films like this now is because comic book movies are wildly popular in current year, and SJWs always invade popular spaces and try and take them over, and eventually ruin them too, like what's happening here. And although it seems like Birds of Prey is looking up to Captain Marvel and trying to power through this contradiction, I don't think it will work out as well for Birds of Prey, considering the lead-in factor and other factors we've gone over before already. Sure, the Birds of Prey has the benefit of having a more popular and well-liked character in the leading role, but the advertising did make it seem like that might be ruined too. And come to find out, after watching this mess, they certainly did make some noteworthy changes to Harley Quinn. As promised by the actress Margot Robbie herself, they made Harley Quinn significantly less attractive, and in turn, less appealing and less likable, and maybe even worse overall. But before we get to the story too much more, let's just talk about how they ruined Harley Quinn's character and look, specifically, which is something that happened throughout the entire film. As expected and as promised, Harley Quinn was noticeably much different looking in this Birds of Prey movie. From what I remember previously in the last film, Suicide Squad, she was always good looking and sexy and hot and cool, and she just wore this one tight outfit the entire time that looked great. And then there was a few flashback scenes with her looking like a sexy doctor in glasses when she meets the Joker, which everyone liked, and then Harley Quinn in her jail cell, she had her suit torn up and turned into a tank top, and she was swinging on this rope all enticing and stuff. That was awesome, and there was even this cool scene later on where Harley suits up for the fighting, and she gets dressed in front of everyone. And at the end, everyone's looking at her because she's so gosh darn hot. And I bring all of this up to strengthen my point about why Birds of Prey ruined this because, well, Harley Quinn did quite the opposite in that movie. As promised and as influenced by them trying to be woke and pro-social justice warrior, they dressed down Harley Quinn hardcore. Apparently, radical leftists can't have women, particularly white ones. Well, they can't be good looking or sexy in their movies. And I say that's really a detriment to their final products. Now, I know many will call me a sexist pig for focusing too much on appearances, but just stay with me here and let me explain. I'm not picking on the actress Margot Robbie for not being attractive. In fact, she's incredibly beautiful and even, we all know she became famous for getting naked in the movie Wolf of Wall Street over five years ago. I don't know why, but some seem to think we forgot about that. And sure, Margot certainly has more to offer than just her looks and nudity. She doesn't act half bad either, but in some cases and with certain characters, looking sexy and attractive is better, and it's to be expected. And I say, Harley Quinn is definitely one of those kinds of characters. In fact, I would even go so far as to say Harley Quinn's signature character trait has to do with the fact that she's insanely beautiful and sexy and also equally deadly. They kind of go hand in hand with her and they add to the uniqueness of that person. So when you watch the new Birds of Prey movie and you immediately start to notice she's wearing baggy, unappealing, and manly looking attire the whole time, well, that's quite the buzzkill. And I'm not even exaggerating this either. Harley never gets sexy or appealing or attractive or even mildly good looking in this entire film. Sure, you can still imagine and see that there's the hot Margot Robbie underneath all the makeup and frumpy clothes, but this is a stark contrast to how the character usually is and how it was in the last movie and in cartoons and in comic book history. And I'm sure that's going to turn off many fans in the process, especially the dudes. So now that we talked about the Birds of Prey opening weekend, why it's flopping and why the theaters are empty and why they ruined the main character, let's now get more into the plot and discuss the SJW moments specifically. Well, I already just went over the biggest mistake, which was fueled by SJW ideology, but Harley Quinn's new frumpy look was hardly the only moment in this picture. It was just the most prevalent and obvious one that carried on throughout most of the movie. And all this feminist, anti-male, misogynist stuff that the cast was talking about in interviews, that pretty much didn't happen in the movie, at least not as much as they said. And it's not as flagrant or obvious or in your face and terrible. No, Birds of Prey was not as reminiscent of Captain Marvel in that respect, but it did have its SJW moments regardless, which we'll go over anyway. Birds of Prey wasn't all that bad, really. It's certainly a watchable film that, while not great or amazing, it wasn't awful or terrible either. Just somewhere in the middle, which could be seen as good or bad in itself, depending on who you ask. I also like that the film was rated R, giving it a nice new take and adult taste, also allowing for more violence and cursing and what have you. Definitely a welcomed turn after all the PG-13 Marvel movies and other play it safe blockbusters out there. In addition, there was good music in the movie and some decent laughs as well. And I also really liked the villains. Funny how the straight white male actors shine through brightest in a movie like this. One designed to attack us and make us the villains purposely. Not just in the film, but outside of it as well. But regardless, watching Ewan McGregor be the Black Mask villain was one of my favorite parts of Birds of Prey. He enjoyed the role, played with it well, and did this whole evil boss thing with an eccentric flair and everything. Really well done. Yes, Ewan McGregor 
McGregor was great, but he also hardly had enough screen time for this, or stuff to do, and the whole pro-female, anti-male angle was certainly working against him. Now, with all that said, let's explore this male versus female thing I was just starting to talk about before. This was probably one of the biggest leftist plot devices, second only to the whole making Harley and all the other white girls ugly thing. Yes, the main subplot of the movie and the theme and premise for all of Birds of Prey can be summed up by simply saying, guys are bad and girls are good. This is, of course, reinforced by the main cast, which consists of five girls in the hero's Birds of Prey team, and their main antagonists are Black Mask and his henchmen, all of which are men. This gets furthered later on toward the end of the movie, when Black Mask literally calls upon all the bad men in Gotham to help him, and he sends them after the girls in the newly formed Birds of Prey team. And in addition, a number of the team members have backstories, most of which amount to women getting wronged by mean, usually straight, white males. For example, almost the entire premise and pretense for this whole movie and what it all begins on and starts from is Harley Quinn breaking up with her boyfriend, Joker of course, the famous Batman villain, and Joker is also the last DC movie that came out. Some might have forgotten about this character, some might even forget that Harley Quinn is just a girl version of Joker, when you get right down to it. And also this whole Birds of Prey thing is just a spin-off of that. And making your feminist movie hinged on a girl who can't get over breaking up with a man, well, that's pretty rich and ironic right there. Then the next character is named Montoya, and she's this really good police detective lady who's stuck in a lower position of her career because, of course, a man is bringing her down and taking credit for her solved cases. Next, there's the Black Canary character, who's being forced into labor by the Black Mask villain. And finally, the Huntress character is seeking vengeance because a group of men killed her whole family when she was a kid. So, yeah, if this thing didn't sound like it had a screw the guy's message already, now you gotta consider all of that. And in my opinion, hinging all of your girl power characters and giving them all access to grind against men, well, it really weakens your project and it shows you're doing this girl power thing not to empower yourselves, but to try and bash and beat upon and bully others you don't like. And a last note here, on the gender warring front, well, the police detective Montoya, she even encounters one of her ex-girlfriends in the movie, showing of course that she's a lesbian. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but it does make it a hundred times more likely that she and others related to them, they hate men. Next, we got a direct and pretty offensive line to go over. I mean, I'm not one to get butt hurt or anything, but as always, if something like this was said about any other group of people, we know the liberals would call it racist and wrong. So if they're going to play that game, we need to play the game with them and call them out when they say BS that's similar. And when they say it, they think they can get away with it too. And I'm here to tell them they can't, especially if we can't in the inverse. Double standards are the worst, but as we all know now too well, if liberals didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any at all. So this line in question that comes up a little bit into the Birds of Prey movie, it's when the Black Canary character catches another soon-to-be Birds of Prey member named Cassandra Kane. Well, Canary catches Kane pickpocketing people on the street. And this younger pickpocket girl, an Asian named Cassandra, and upon being told to stop stealing, Cassandra tells Black Canary something along the lines of, I can make money off white dudes too. It might have been just white people or phrased a bit differently than that, but that is the gist of it. And this open condemnation of whites coming from the cast's 13-year-old Asian character and actress in such a blatant and open and frankly brass and unnecessary way, well, it really shows what this film and its production is all about. It's about bashing men, particularly whites. And that's why all the guys are bad guys here and the really bad ones, the main villains, they're white dudes. And more about those villains again for one second, well, they were actually reportedly supposed to be two gay guys. And the plot originally revolved around them trying to retrieve their naughty pictures they lost. But apparently that was all changed. Probably because DC and the SJWs behind this, they didn't want to get caught making gay people into bad guys. Finally, to wrap things up, we got a few more quick things to go over. First of all, there was a joke in one scene where the text on the screen said that Harley Quinn voted for Bernie, meaning Bernie Sanders, of course. Then there was other characters who had butch outfits too. Basically, all of the birds of prey dressed down and were looking manly, despite most of them actually being hotties. And we already went over how Harley was dressed down, but also, the Huntress character is another good example of that. She was played by the very hot and stunning Mary Elizabeth Winstead, but she also gets dressed down for this movie like Harley did too, for the same lame SJW reasons. Such a shame and rather hypocritical too since, and here's the kicker, for some reason the Black Canary character, she's the only one that gets to be sexy in Birds of Prey. Gee, I wonder why. Could it be because Canary is a brownwashed character played by a mixed actress? Well, I think that's certainly related because also, of course, as I just went over, both of the prominent white girls in Birds of Prey, who were actually played by really sexy actresses, well, they were turned into boyish looking disasters who had to dress down just cause just because of SJW reasons. 
What do you guys think? Are you going to see Birds of Prey? Did you see empty theaters like I did? What about the SJW moments here? Were there more that I missed? Comment your thoughts on everything below and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button to help support this channel and we'll see y'all next time.